in Cincinnati, Ohio for Big East basketball. A pair of top 25 teams. Pitt visiting the Bearcats of Cincinnati and the Panthers control the opening tip. This is James Robinson. Patterson on the outside. Both teams very good defensively. They hold opponents under 59 points a game and under 40% shooting from the floor. Jackson cut off the baseline, turnaround jump hook, rebounded by Adams. We talked about solid defense by both teams. The key will be offense. And Cincinnati penetrate like they did in the first game that they won 70-61. Patterson off on the jumper. Or can Pitt win the offensive rebounding battle, something that they lost when they lost at, uh, against Cincinnati in Pittsburgh. Kashmir Wright leads his team in assists, three and a half a game. Pitt seems to want to switch everything. Almost kind of a matchup zone, but you see what happens is you wind up getting a mismatch like that. Good ball movement frees up Parker for a three, and he missed everything. Offensive rebound. The follow won't go for Jackson. The one thing Jamie Dixon said before this game, Pitt had to win the rebound battle because that's how Cincinnati got to him in the first game. Yeah, it was on the offensive glass that Cincinnati had their breakthrough, particularly down the stretch. And these are two of the top rebounding teams in the country. Kilpatrick gets the first bucket. He's third in the Big East in scoring, 18-3. Cincinnati loves to play that tough man to man. Good help right there by Mudge. Zana left alone, comes inside the three point line and misses the shot. Last couple of times down, it's been one and done for Pittsburgh. Not even a blue shirt in the vicinity of a rebound. Right gets the ball screen, goes to the top of the key. Now to Patterson, or now to Kilpatrick. Parker into the lane. He kicks it out for a wide open three, but Wright can't hit it. Robinson looks inside. Zana calling for the ball, gets it, and scores the first Good Panther zone. bucket at the 17-30 mark. Well, that's a good news for Pittsburgh to leave, to leave Zana. Hasn't really had a double-digit game over the last eight games. They need him on the block badly. Parker out to kill Patrick down the lane with a runner. No bucket, but a foul. And Mike, that's the penetration that Jamie Dixon fears. It created opportunities for Cincinnati in the first game. Patterson picked up his first foul, so Kilpatrick will go to the line. Whereas a 71% shooter had a streak earlier this year against Iowa State when he made 16 in a row that broke one of Oscar Robertson's school records. Did not miss in that game. Oscar a fixture in recent years in Cincinnati basketball games. There is the legend who led this team to a couple of national championships. Still in pretty good shape, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he looks pretty good. You know, Oscar and I go back. He knows he's one of my idols, somebody that I utilize in describing how the game should be played. People are basketball players. You can't be bogged down by a mere position. Offensive rebound on the miss. Zana gets it off to the big freshman, Steven Adams, and he's fouled. And that's what Pittsburgh needs to do. Continue to generate offense and test the depth of Cincinnati. It's the offensive rebound. You take a look, a nice job reaching over. Marzano without fouling. And Adams, once he gets his hands stronger, and I think some of that's mental, he would have been able to take the, take the foul and dunk. 
He has really struggled at the free throw line. He's only 18 out of 48 this year. That's 37 and a half percent. However, keep talking. <laughs> when you bank him in, <laughs> it's actually that's a window. better angle if you can do it. I was going to say that's what that window's for. Rarely used from the free throw line, however. It's Good like looking stroke on that one. It's like the fire extinguisher, you know, in case of emergency. <laughs> he broke it. That's what he needed. Boy, look at Woodall fighting through the screens. This is what we mean by tough defense. Both teams will get belly to belly. They'll find a way to go over top of screens, particularly with the three point shooters. Very difficult to get an easy shot against either one of these clubs. Shot clock down to four. Right trying to penetrate, lost the ball and travel. Once again, the defense is squeezing the ball handlers as they go past the screens. The guy guarding the ball handler stays on top and gets on top of it, and the hedge guy steps out. Whoa! Panthers take the lead, 6 4, Kilpatrick quickly back the other way. Welcome to Cincinnati where we have a 6-4 Pittsburgh lead early in this game. 15 minutes 48 seconds to go. First half of play. It is so jammed up at the top of the Big East. Marquette and Syracuse the only teams with two losses but there are eight clubs within two games in the loss column. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick, Glenn Elmore. It's great to have you with us. These teams are so similar. They have tough, talented athletes, and they play tough defense. Well, and they find success in numbers. Both of these teams are two of the deepest teams in America, playing 10 guys, and each of those 10 guys play 11 or more minutes. And that's what keeps the guys fresh and keeps the defense intense. The one-on-one -on -one is about defense, too. They hold teams under 59%. They hold teams under 40% shooting from the floor. Well, Pittsburgh, they've won six out of the last seven. Their defensive numbers tell you why. Cincinnati, on the other hand, their offense is bogged down in conference play. They've got to keep pushing uh, to pick it up versus that stout Pittsburgh defense. But in the first game, as we talked about before, Cincinnati won 70 to 61. It was because of Wright and Kilpatrick, their ability to penetrate, and the penetration created opportunities for some threes and certainly offensive rebounds. We have seen that kind of play just come out to start this game and we've played four minutes and 12 seconds. There's Mick Cronin who's now in his seventh year at Cincinnati. He's pretty much a Bearcat lifer, started his coaching career here as a video coordinator under the previous Cincinnati legend, Bob Huggins. Worked his way up to assistant coach, went off to Murray State, and then came back to take over the program. And Jamie Dixon has made as fast an ascent as you can in the coaching ranks. He is number seven active in win percentage, over 75% of his games as the head coach of the Pitt Panthers. And this is a team, Glenn, we saw them early, we saw them recently. They're getting better. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I mean, it's growth. And again, the defense has tightened even more so. And we talk about their depth. It's just a tremendous thing to see them. Their bench is outscored. The other team's bench almost doubled. Mudge tried to take it inside, ended up double team, knocked out of bounds out to Cincinnati. Mudge going against the freshman Adams, who has been a much better defensive presence than he has been on offense. 
but one second on the shot clock it recycled and the referees reset it because the ball did not touch the rim. Now you can't catch and shoot. You've got to try to tip it. <laughs> There's a violation right there. Once you catch the ball, well, it was. It's it only, is a shot clock violation. Well, actually, now point three is where they'll say you tip it. One second, you still have an opportunity. No, it was point one. No, that was one oh, second. Oh, it was one second. You're yeah. right. Now full court pressure from Cincinnati. Bearcats down by two. And you saw the shot block by Stephen Adams. He's another reason why this Pittsburgh defense has become tighter and tighter. You know, he's the anchor back there defensively, and he's starting to figure it out. Averages almost two blocks a game. Woodall, too strong on the three-pointer, and a foul underneath is going to be called on Johnson. Duran Johnson picks up his first. You can tell how much the teams are emphasizing rebounding in this one they're really going to the boards and the bodies are banging against bodies with trying to block out and the offensive player trying to elude the block out Cincinnati has hit only one of its first seven shots from the floor Kilpatrick has oh, a nice early bucket drive. nice drive by Justin Jackson got the bucket and draws the foul I'll tell you what we talk about how hard you work Jackson was practicing just that before the game about an hour before the game he was out here sweating profusely putting the ball on the floor left handed right handed charging hard to the basket and now in game time situation I always appreciate when guys are practicing things they will do in a game you know, I hate to see seven footers shooting threes all the time exactly Duran Johnson picked up his second quick foul they're going to get him out of the game Dante Taylor will come in for Adams and Gilon Gwynn who's done some backup point guard duties comes into the game at the 1456 mark as Jackson goes to the free throw line. Three point play Cincinnati regains the lead. Now you see the Cincinnati pressure. We showed you the numbers how their offense is bogged down in conference play. And Mick Cronin has said during that period of time they've got to get more offense out of their defense. So with the pressure they're looking to create turnovers. They're looking to get in transition and maybe steal some points that way. This is Woodall Ziegler and Cameron Wright are both in the backcourt to help out against this pressure. And there's a steal on the way in. Wynn reached in got a handful goes down to Jackson and Jackson travel. Great feed from Quinn. I think Jackson was surprised that he was so wide open. But Quinn did a terrific job on the steal of a block. Jackson, <laughs> you got to turn and face before you move. Locate the defenders. And that time he did just the opposite. Here's a trap right here. Woodall gets it up to right. Wright takes it in, has the ball partially tipped and out of bounds to Cincinnati. Taylor pleading his case, but he's not going to win. Mike, how many lost opportunities have we seen for both teams? They play terrific defense or they beat the pressure and attack. Only to lose that opportunity. Wright with a nice drive, but got nobody on the offensive glass once again. Titus Rubles number two is in. Junior out of Dallas Texas trying to drive kicks it out to win. And you see Cincinnati making a concerted effort to try to penetrate off the bounce to create opportunities for themselves and others. Kilpatrick little runner at the baseline and it's knocked out of bounds to Pittsburgh. Every possession, every foot of the court being contended right now. Pittsburgh did a nice job just content with getting it over. And now 
positioning guys for their sets. And when you have the opportunity to move the ball, you've got to attack that pressure and succeed if you want them to get out of it. Right, cut off the baseline, seven to shoot. Moore with a runner. J.J. Moore out of Brentwood, New York, gets his first bucket. Nice back door. Good cut when can't convert. Good use of the backboard, though. Got to applaud. You don't see many guys utilizing that backboard on the Woodall. Great Ooh. penetration. The shot was missed. The follow was missed. Taylor had two point blank looks and couldn't get it down. Rubles, jumper, no. We've seen a lot. I haven't seen everything, but we've seen a lot so far. Haven't we ever? Don't you just hate it when that rim kind of comes right up in your face? Amazing. It rose on Taylor instead of Taylor rising on the rim. Runner by Ziegler won't go. Played eight minutes and it's 8 7. Good baseline drive that time. Parker bucket in the foul. Well, we talked about Cincinnati's scoring problems in Big East play. This is a guy, Jaquan Parker. He could be that reliable third scorer. On the other end with Pittsburgh, you talk about missed opportunities. Once again, that rim kind of rose right up on tail and surprised him a little bit, didn't it? You've got to be a little more powerful than that, don't you? Well, you got to elevate a little bit. You Get up there and finish. You can't rub it in. But going back to Jaquan Parker, averaging 11 points a game, you know, he's the guy that can support Kashmir Wright and obviously Sean Kilpatrick, the leading scorer. Being that reliable third scorer, not allowing defense is the key on those two guys. And Parker coming off a very good game and what turned out to be a loss at Providence, a very disappointing defeat, but he had 12 points and 10 boards. Cincinnati back on top by two. This is Robinson who was checked back in at the point. Well, Jamie Dixon could feel pretty comfortable with James Robinson handling the ball. He leads the Big East in assist turnover ratio, 3.3 to 1. So he's going to dish out far more than he's going to give away. What a spectacular number that is. And then he turns one over. Well, actually, I'm going to blame J.J. Moore. When it hits a guy in the hands, you can't say it's your turnover. It'll go down in the record books as Robinson's turnover, but that was unfortunate. Shaquille Thomas, who's getting some more playing time. Wright will launch. Offensive rebound and a foul, no basket. A tough, hard-nosed game to start with and a low-scoring game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Now that's better. And the Dodge Dart. Dodge. New rules.
All right, I'm going to read this the easy way. Rivalry Week continues <laughs> with a Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN. First at 7, Kentucky takes on Florida, then at 9, an interstate rivalry in the Big Ten. Michigan squares off with Michigan State. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. Think your team belongs in the Big in the uh, top 10? Whoa, you don't want to be there. All it does is put a target on your back. Four of the top five have lost this week, and five of the top ten. Well, especially the top two spots. Florida got smacked. Obviously, we know what happened in Indiana and Illinois on buzzer beater. How many teams can win a national title right now? I mean, a dozen? Yeah, I, I would say that that's a, that's a legitimate number. Maybe even a little bit wider. Jermaine Sanders at the free throw line. A lot of these guys for Cincinnati with the new strength and conditioning coach, Mike Rayfeld, who has a football background, and really transformed their bodies. Lost weight in better shape. Their jumping ability is better, and it shows. Both teams just fighting for anything they can possibly get. Good double team there. Oh, man. Wright. Cameron Wright with just the one hand, and I don't say that was a jump shot. I'm not sure what that was. It's two points. Two points. Exactly. But the thing you got to love about this game is probably the way it was meant to be played. Strict, tough man to man, helping out. The essence of team basketball right here. There's the help. No quarter asked, none given. Look at this, everybody covered, everybody challenged. Five to shoot. And that's a tough off-balance jump shot from the baseline by Rubles. And a foul on Cincinnati going for the offensive rebound. It's going to be on Shaquille Thomas's first. Well, you know you played good defense if that's the end result. Yeah, the 35-second shot clock. Oh, there's no question about it. And it Teams like Pittsburgh and Cincinnati both take pride in that strong man to man. Rarely will you see them play zone. Patterson gets it across the 10 second line, gives it up to Robinson. Adams is back in. Patterson into the corner, Cameron Wright, 10 to shoot. Just nowhere to go. This is exceptionally good man to man. For both teams, look at this. This is amazing. Robinson, he has to take a tough shot as the shot clock is running down. And they're doing it without committing fouls, Lent. They are just playing textbook man to man defense. Yeah, they are. I mean, like I said, the help is strong and guys are playing tough. Right will bring it up against Robinson. Rubles fake the backdoor lob. Good feed inside. Sheck Bush with the jam. One of the few times anybody has had an uncontested bucket. Bearcats by three. Patterson got by right, takes it all the way down the gut, then has it knocked it away as he got to the rim. Excuse me, Sanders. And Sanders is a three-point shot. And he's not a scorer. He's only had a total of eight points in the last five games. Averages 3.2 points a game. He gets three right there.
In a game like this where points come so hard, every basket is at a premium, and when you hit a three, even more so. Yeah, when you hit threes, and also when you're able to move the ball and get guys open. And we talk about both of these teams, Cincinnati having some problems with assists as teams are able to kind of bog down their offense and force them to go one on one. But Patterson straight down the lane for the layup. But Pittsburgh averages 17 assists per game. And right now they've only got two. And that really stems from the tight defense that covers the receivers, pressures the passer, and forces one on one. Two threes in a row this time from their leading scorer, Sean Kilpatrick, out of the corner. Kilpatrick has seven, and the lead has grown to seven at 19-12. Patterson, good catch by Adams, somehow got it back. Patterson gave him a tough pass to handle. But I tell you what, I'm surprised he even threaded, threaded a needle with that pass. And Adams reached for it. Watch Adams give you, give him right there. He, this has happened before, but if you're going to reach with one hand, you better be sure you have it. Adams has got to go after this ball with two hands so he can do something with authority. He gets fouled and kind of got bailed out a little bit. But it's two hands down there that low with that kind of bounce pass. And then in one motion, he can rise and rip the rim off if he cares to. He's hit all three of his free throws today. The first one off the glass. He swished his last two. And as we told you, he came into this game shooting only 18 out of 48 from the line. Hard to keep. He does much better in practice than he does in games, but he missed that one. Hard to keep. Left. Hard to keep him in the game down the stretch in a close game situation. Absolutely. Because he's almost an instant turnover. Now he's switched out on the guards. Nice job right there. Narsut checks in for Cincinnati in the middle. Rubles got it back to Kilpatrick for the runner. Rubles did the right thing in driving on Adams, but you got to go to the basket. He gave Adams too much room to block it. Fortunately, Cincinnati recovered and scored. And if all else fails, get it back to Sean Kilpatrick. Always a great idea. 21-13, the lead has grown to eight. Nice. Woodall back in, good pass and a foul. As they got it inside to Zana, it would have been a layup. The foul prevents that. We've got a timeout on the court with 7.19 to go in the game. Well, that's the, the Bearcats getting better shots. That's supposed to be a perimeter mismatch, but it worked out in Cincinnati's favor.
Cincinnati Bearcats lead by eight when sometimes young guys get lost on defense. Yeah they certainly do and they need some help. And now you're going to take a look right here where you have a double screen right off the screen. Adams plays it well takes the middle. The second screen right here he needs to see this guy cut to the basketball. Why are these guys buried? They should be in that lane right there instead. They're relegated to spectators. So the weak side help failed Stephen Adams. That was inside the play. Or I'd say the lack of weak side help failed Stephen yes. Adams. Five assists on their seven field goals. Both of these teams with four defeats in the Big East. And it looks like it's going to be a wide open tournament, doesn't it? I saw that at the line. I mean, how many teams? We would have thought after going 0 and 2 in the first two games of the Big East Conference, probably wrote Pittsburgh off. They were going to have another year like they did, they did last year when they finished 5 and 13. But they've come roaring back into the fray. Adams offensive rebound off the miss and they get it to Zana and Zana scores again. He has seven points early to leave Zana who averages ten and a half points a game. And Zana that was a strong move. Took a lot of contact there. And there's the zone right here. Pittsburgh changing the defense. Two three zone. Giving Cincinnati a different look. This is not their bread and butter. Sanders. Offensive rebound to Rubles. And a fresh 35. So Patrick will give it up to Kashmir Wright. Nearly thrown away. Saved by Rubles. All they're doing right now is throwing the ball around the perimeter in the zone and there's the miss and the rebound to Patterson. Well it's keeping Cincinnati out of the middle and that play that Stephen Adams was victimized by and a couple others where they got paint points in the paint forced Pitt to go to the zone at least for a little bit to give them a different look. Got to be careful with that big fella. Put the ball down on the floor they take it away from him right. There's the drive by. Kilpatrick and he draws the foul. Yeah, here's where Stephen Adams has to learn the nuance of the game. He puts it on the floor, he loses the dribble. First of all, his dribble's too high, and secondly, really doesn't locate the defense and gives them an opportunity to go after it. And they're a good call by the official. Defender on the move, not in legitimate defensive position. And really the strip I think that they called it on as opposed to the contact. Five fifty seven to go first half Cincinnati inbounds that may be a five second call and it is. Excellent defense by the Panthers forcing the five second call and turnover. And that time Cincinnati was definitely looking for Mudge or whoever he screened for it was a double screen. And they thought that they could victimize Adams once again, take advantage of his inexperience. Patterson gets the high screen, takes it down the lane, into the corner, Woodall for three. Woodall, a 36% long range shooter, gets his first bucket of the game. And how about Lamar Patterson on the drive? Nifty pass right on the money. Good passes lead to good shots. Pittsburgh's first three Kilpatrick sees an opening slashes in gets it off to Sanders and Sanders is fouled. Again we talked about 17 assists per game. That's what Pittsburgh has. Now look at the help there. Wright tried to step out and help Woodall escapes him gets in the corner. Patterson sees him and knocks it down when you have a guy that size you can put it on the floor who can play in the zone really not afraid to turn locate defenses draw them and kick it you got a terrific advantage. So Patrick on the wooden award list preseason first team all days and this is the first front end of a one and one. 
Cincinnati's lead has dwindled to two. Patterson tries to three, one and done. Not so sure that quick shot was called for. They had an opportunity to really draw Cincinnati's defense and find some open shots. They could get that shot anytime. Right, good crossover that had it tipped away by Patterson. Three on one. And Balea, good dish by Woodall. And Pittsburgh has come back to tie this game at 21. One of the rare fast break points in this ball game. I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh going down by eight at about 7.45 left in this game. No panic right here. They know that their defense will get them back in the ball game and in transition. Nice job there, Woodall to Patterson. Draws the defender. Kilpatrick didn't know what to do. They had a three-on-one break. Tomorrow on ABC, catch an NBA doubleheader first at one. The Clippers face off the next at a 3:30. It's the Lakers and the Heat covered tips off with Kia NBA countdown at 12:30. You know, Len, one of the interesting things to watch in this league in particular, you play tough, hard-nosed defense. You can bring that every single night, even if your shooting is off, you can always play defense. Well, that's the name of the game. I mean, your defense has to be consistent. And you look at all the great teams, that's the one thing that has really never fallen off has been the defensive effort. And when you play 10 guys, and now you can keep your defense fresh and you can keep it intense, you're at a terrific advantage. Both of these teams do that. Thomas pull up jumper. That's the first thing you do when you draw no iron is wipe your hands on your short. <laughs> Let everybody know you had a little perspiration. Yeah, on. that's right. Show everybody there's a reason. Zana being very aggressive goes to the baseline foul by Parker. The one on Parker, only the 15 foul, so they won't shoot. Nice comeback by Pitt in a hostile setting. Yeah, down eight. And they never lost sight of the fact that defense will get them and rebounding will get them back into the ball game. Pitt has three guys on the outside who are terrific ball handlers. They should be able to get some decent shots off of their feeds. Patterson with a miss. Packer can't do anything off the head. Right now you got right on right. <laughs> how far the defense extends out just makes it very difficult to run the offense. Ten to shoot. Kilpatrick turns it over. Almost got it back. But Cameron Wright gives it off. To Woodall. Woodall goes inside. Triple team. And they have to kick it back out and reset the offense. A good poise underneath there by Zana. Holding on to that ball, waiting for somebody to get open. Patterson tries to drive. Here's the three from the top of the circle. Woodall, who's a very good outside shooter, now has a half dozen, and Pitt has regained the lead. And all of that a result of Chris passing inside, outside, around the perimeter. Forcing the defense to adjust, and you ultimately catch him in rotation. Wright hasn't been able to penetrate very much for Cincinnati. Kilpatrick. Seven on the shot clock. Nice move to the hoop by Jaquan Parker, the senior from Suffolk, Virginia. Oh, it ends a 12-2 Panther run. I'm really surprised, though, that there wasn't a block called or a charge. But there was significant contact there. I'm just not so sure that you can let that one play. Patterson spins. <laughs> Got a good look. Beautiful reverse Shaquille Thomas. Thomas 
Bruce not wiping his jersey that was short this time. <laughs> Terrific penetration and utilization of the rim to avoid the shot blockers. The lead has changed hands six times in this first half. Taylor calling from the ball inside. Patterson has it taken away by Kilpatrick. And he'll get the bucket and draw the foul. And Kilpatrick may have hurt himself. I'll tell you what. Look at the steal right here by Kilpatrick. Here is where Wright should have exercised some discretion. One. And Steve Weissman with Coach Bruce Pearl coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. The power of the Kohl Center. How Michigan lost a chance to control its own destiny in the Big Ten and get back to number one. Plus, what's up with Kansas? Coach Pearl going to let you know why they've dropped three in a row and big time stuff going on at Miami. That and more at the half. Cincinnati training staff working on the hand of Sean Kilpatrick as Cincinnati has taken a three-point lead. And here's how he hurt himself. Huh? Well, there's the steal. Just a nice job on the help. Now watch. He feels a look right there. He's <laughs> looking down at his hand. And still has a presence of mind to finish. His Cameron right, as I said, should have exercised some discretion. And we'll see how that affects Sean Kilpatrick his shooting. It's the conference's third leading score. I don't think it was dislocated. Otherwise, we'd have heard the scream when they put it back in place. This kid can be an explosive score. He's had 20 or more points eight times this year. And this is the 23rd game out of 25 that he scored in double figures. Well, he shot the free throw. Didn't seem to be a problem there. As a game high doesn't right now. Oh, lost that one. It's the unforced turnovers that will kill you. Yeah, what all really charged to get open. And it looked like that ball had a little backspin on it because it right through his finger. So Patrick quickly back on the court for Cincinnati. 125 to go first half. 
And the Bearcats with, took a nice, comfortable lead, which stood a big hand to run and have the lead again. Rubles trying to get inside, does it kicks to right. Cash oh, right in the lane. He passed up a shot, a wide open yes, shot. Yes, he did. Phil Patrick out of the corner. Nothing wrong with the figure on that one. Ten nothing run, Bearcats. And Kilpatrick has 15 first half points. And it certainly has been a game of runs. But boy, Casimir Wright just surprised me. Wide open, had an opportunity for a six foot shot. Exactly. Adams trying to back his way in. Jump hook. Nice touch. He kind of lost not enough of that. <laughs> He kind of lost the ball a little bit, wound up with it on his palm, and still able to finesse it in. But you're right. They did they do not isolate enough and throw it straight in the right. We saw in the second half against Syracuse, he was much more aggressive offensively and made a difference. Only three to shoot the crowd trying to help the Bearcats offense. But right forced to fire out of the corner. Nice finish for the Bearcats to get momentum going into the locker room on a 10-2 run. And they have a 31-26 lead over the Pitt Panthers. Now we take you to the studio for Steve Weissman and Bruce Pearl. They're in the studio for the UPS halftime report. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. This is the UPS halftime report. Steve Weissman, Coach Bruce Pearl, and Earlier today, number five Kansas traveling to Oklahoma. Sooners looking to snap a 10 game losing streak against the Jayhawks. Second half, Stephen Pledger doing work. Well, Stephen Pledger's a great three point shooter, but that time he makes a tough two. Kansas would make a run, though. They did it on defense and transition to offense. Well, Kansas is a proud basketball team. They've been called out by their coach, and they're trying to respond here on the road. But Oklahoma, in the end, gets the upset. Kansas drops three in a row for the first time since 2005. However, if you're starting to feel sorry for the Jayhawks, stop. Now, if you're a 23-year-old Kansas fan, this is tied for the longest losing streak you have ever seen. Of course, back in the day, they lost four in a row, still won the title in 1988, Danny Manning and company. As we welcome you into our UPS Halftime Report studio, Steve Weisman, former National Coach of the Year, Bruce Pearl. Kansas drops three in a row. What is going on with them? You're right. Nobody's feeling sorry for Kansas because they've won eight straight Big 12 championships. But this is a team that's got four seniors who at one point during their career came off the bench. I think confidence is an issue. Freshman Ben McLemore is having a terrific year. but He's got a quiet personality. They don't have a leader on the floor. And they got Kansas State coming in Tuesday night. Yeah, Kansas State's certainly going to be tough. Meanwhile, the game we're watching right now, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. How did the Bearcats make that 10 2 run late? Cincinnati turned up the defensive pressure. We're talking about two of the best defensive teams in the Big East right now. Pittsburgh building a wall, keeping Cincinnati out of the paint. But late in that half, turned up pressure. Pittsburgh turnovers led to some easy Cincinnati baskets. In the half court, these two teams are hard to score on. Well, as we saw with Kansas, it is tough being in the top five right now. We see that with Michigan as well. Still to come here on the UPS Halftime Report. Wolverines had a chance to secure their own destiny in the Big Ten. Get back to number one, but it is tough goings in Madtown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by All States. Are you in good hands?
This halftime report is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Steve Weissman, Coach Bruce Pearl back with you here. Badgers had won 10 straight at home against Michigan, but all oh, the Wolverines needed this one bad. Less than a minute remaining, second half. Badgers down three. Jared Bergeron right at Trey Park. Steve, I didn't think the big fella had that in his repertoire. Now Wisconsin three fouls to give, but they left Tim Hardaway Jr. to shoot the shot. This game's over. It's a three-point lead right now. 2.4 seconds left. All they've got to do is foul. They don't do it, and how about Ben Brust? Can you believe it? Said it was awesome. Something I'll remember forever, Coach. Well, that's special. Very, very special. Tough kid, tough place to play. Michigan had this game just like Bo Ryan drew it up. So tied at 60, we head to overtime. More from Ben Brust. Balling, team high 14 points. Last chance for Michigan comes down to Trey Burke. And how about the Wolverines? Could control their own destiny, couldn't get it done. I thought if they could have got this one, they would have been in control of the Big Ten. It is tough to be a top five team on the road. 0 and 5 this week. How about Tuesday? Florida losing at Arkansas. Wednesday, Kansas losing to TCU. Thursday, Indiana, number one team, loses at Illinois. And then today, Michigan going down at Wisconsin. And Kansas falling again at Oklahoma. All five losses coming on the road to unranked opponents. Now, Florida, we talked about them. They lost at Arkansas. Not trying to lose two straight, taking on Mississippi State. First half, Casey Prather, perfect timing. That's one of the advantages of having a small forward play power forward. So Florida turns up the full court pressure. And they've got some good, good guards led by Kenny Boyd. Well, you can't let Florida get you in transition. Kenny Boyton as good as anybody in the country. And that right there is Murphy, a stretch four man. 83-58, Gators avoid losing two in a row, so they win. How about Miami looking to become the first ACC team to start 10-0 in conference since Duke in 08? Oh, they got LeBron and D. Wade in the house looking to show off. Kenny Kaji, he knows they're there. From Palm Beach County, Kenny Kaji. Later in the first, Shane Larkin, the sophomore, dropped a career-high five threes, 18 points, coach. People are going to wonder why is Miami not number one when the polls come out. This might be the best basketball team in the country, but one, two, and three have lost. Duke is four. They go to number one, but Miami might be the best team in the ACC. Proud pop of the Hall of Famer, Barry Larkin in the house, seeing his son drop buckets, and then they just clown the Tar Heels. The Hurricanes are having fun. And their dangerous basketball team, six seniors, are hungry men. The first time Miami has beaten UNC twice in a single season. LeBron loves it. They are 10-0 in conference. How about earlier today? State Farm shot from half court. Senior Casey Murdoch from Notre Dame. That's good for 18 grand. He kissed that one off the glass. It's good and it goes. Second guy this year to hit it in our State Farm shot from half court. Later tonight. Saturday, prime time, presented by DirecTV. Louisville traveling to Notre Dame, 9 Eastern on ESPN. You can also see it on the Watch ESPN app. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you.
Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. Steve Weissman alongside the coach, Bruce Pearl. How about another coach? JT3, Georgetown, taking on Rutgers today. First half tied at 15. Markel starts for three. Efficient offensively. They made 27 shots. They only missed 20. Eli Carter led all scores with 23, but more Hoyas. Starks, team high 20, another three. Georgetown up top, second half tied at 60. Otto Porter Jr. taking over. His sixth double-double of the season. He could do it inside, and he can do it outside. And the Hoyas, 6-0 in those games, coach. They've won three straight, 69-63, your final. How about Ole Miss? They beat Missouri by 15 at Oxford, but this one's in Columbia. Second half, Mizzou up big. Phil Pressey wide open. He had 22 points. A completely different team at home. Phil Pressey also had one turnover. He valued the basketball. Later on, things get a bit chippy. Alex Oriaki, Reginald Buckner get tangled up. And, uh, they know these guys. They know each other, right? There's some familiarity with these teams, no question. Buckner's from Memphis. Oriaki did not make a good play there. Lawrence Bowers tries to come over and be the peacemaker here. Cooler heads should have prevailed. Missouri dominant in, at home. At 29-1 in home games at Mizzou Arena under Frank Haight. Game currently going on. K-State at the half against Iowa State. Just a one-point lead, Coach. That's a big goal, the game right there. Wonderful basketball game. Great offense with Iowa State. Great defense with Kansas State. Wildcats 57% shooting led by Rodney Magruder right now. Earlier today, Butler just squeaking past George Washington. Their first road win since January 12th. Butler can defend. George Washington only shot 28% at home. Well, the game you're watching right now, second half upcoming. Sean Kilpatrick doing work for the Bearcats. Since he up five on pit. Second half, next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cadillac, the standard of the world. Welcome back to Cincinnati, where it is a five-point game. The Bearcats over the Panthers, both teams in the top 25. We told you it was going to be a defensive battle because both of these teams play so hard on defense. 
and it was. We only had one player in double figures, and it was the one guy you might expect. Yeah, certainly Sean Kilpatrick, among others, has been the dominant force in this game, but on the offensive end, we've got a lot of guys who've done it well defensively, but Kilpatrick's making the best of the opportunities he's had. He's done a terrific job of moving without it. Penetration has been finding him, and even luck. Get a shot blocked and get it back. Johnny on the spot, Sean Kilpatrick. And even if he has to do it with one hand, he steps in, steals the ball, maybe dislocates the finger, looks at it, and says, I still got five on this hand. I can get it done. And getting it done, he certainly has. You take a look at what he's been able to do. Zana has held up his end on the Pittsburgh side with seven points. He's only missed one shot. The front court has come through with 18 and the Panthers 26 points. Kilpatrick, the only player in double figures, he has hit five of his eight shots. But at various times throughout this game, we've had one-on-one -on -one situations where the defender has been the dominant player. You're right. The time. Cincinnati trying to complete the season sweep of the Panthers. They won in Pittsburgh the first time these teams play. Robinson guarding Kilpatrick, the pass tipped away and stolen by the Panthers. Extremely hard hedge by Stephen Adams, almost to the point where he was too far away from his guy to check Woods. That's why the turnover occurred, trying to get the ball to Woods. Neither Adams nor Woods have been offensive factors in this game. This is Adams backing in on Mudge and got the lay in. It's not pretty, but it's effective right now. He'll get prettier as time goes on. I think Jamie Dixon will settle for effectiveness. Kashmir right and a wide open three passed on it, got it inside, knocked away, taken back by Kilpatrick and he gets it over to Rubles and Rubles draws the foul. Well, Cincinnati has placed big emphasis on assists and moving the ball and hitting the open man. That time they were almost charged with overpassing. You take a look right there in the jump shot, or at least what you thought was a jump shot. Rubles, Rubles passes the ball inside, gets it back. They're like four passes to get him to the free throw line. Those foot and a half passes don't work out too well, <laughs> especially to big guys. Yeah, I mean, when you're point blank to the basket, instead of giving it up, you ought to take your defender with you going up strong. Rubles has been unable to score in this game so far, averaging six and a half a contest. It's the free throw there and gets off the dime. 32 to 28. Cincinnati. Rubles more of a, a, a rebounder. Than really a score. He takes advantage of penetration, takes advantage of offensive rebound. Zana. And at halfway down, comes back out the rebound to Rubles. Rubles in the top 20 of rebounding in the Big East. Four in this game. Right? Who lost his footing and traveled? Patterson offered to help him up. Cashmere Wright wasn't having any of that. We can be friends after the game. That's right. But I'll tell you what, the changing defense that time a matchup by Pittsburgh. It's kind of confusing Cincinnati a little bit. That time Wright didn't know which way to go, whether to go to the basket or kick it outside. Woodall brings it up against Wright. <laughs> Holding foul away from the ball. <laughs> That's going to be on the It's number one on the junior from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, Rubles having quite the battle inside with Talib Zana. Woodall goes in the backcourt to retrieve that long inbounds pass. Here's the seven-foot freshman. Good step through. 
He's doing in this half exactly what he did in the second half against Syracuse, being much more aggressive, but he's getting more opportunities. Yeah, the more success he has, the greater the confidence his teammate has in him. Rubles for three. No, and the rebound to Zana. And more often do they go to it. Woodall pull up jumper too strong. Zana offensive rebound. And is fouled by Mudge. It's going to be three on check Mudge. Well, you're going to take a look right here. Adams gets the ball down low. He makes one step, keeps that right pivot foot down. Actually, he steps on the left. I think he picked up his pivot foot. The step was so big, though, that people just expected that to be a legitimate move. Zana at the line, the young man who was born in Nigeria. They have so many guys from foreign countries coming over, especially big guys, 6'10", 7 footers. Mudge is from Senegal, and a player on the roster from the Sudan. That's Narsa. Well, size is a precious asset in basketball. You get a can't lot of guys. Teach it. That's right, you can't teach it. And you know, you can also, in many places, you've already used up all that you have. <laughs> That's got to go other places to find it. Cincinnati by one. Right out of the corner. Got it! A three for Cashmere Wright. He's number 11 in the Big East in long range shooting almost 40%. That's his first bucket tonight in the big one. And again, it was Jaquan Parker off the dribble, the penetration, the same kind of concept that Cincinnati used in the first half to get their jump shooters open. Patterson got by Mudge. But if the foul's on Mudge, that's going to be a big one. That's four on Shaq Budge, and that is going to get Narsuk back into the ball game in a hurry. Well, in the last five games, Budge has drawn 21 out of possible 25 fouls. He has to stay out of foul trouble for Cincinnati to have success. The advantage with having two guys who can play in the pivot is you've got 10 fouls to give. Woods with the experience as a senior. He's averaged 8.5 rebounds and a little over two blocks in his last four games. He's been very effective. Lead is cut back to three as we approach 16 minutes. Rubles trying to penetrate, cut off at the baseline. Right will reset. Kilpatrick wants a screen and gets it. Great bounce pass at the baseline, but the miss on the shot. Rubles had a shot at a layup on the great feed from Kilpatrick, and this is going to be an offensive foul on Zana. That's a tough call, and you see Jamie Dixon expressing himself. But check Woods for Cincinnati. Gone. You're going to find up seeing some more play inside the pivot.
with 15.48 to go from Cincinnati. And the freshman from New Zealand, Stephen Adams, making his presence felt. Well, he's making his presence felt and should, going forward, make his presence felt even harder against the Cincinnati defense. But Shek Woods on the bench in foul trouble. You see what Adams is doing right here. He should be the focal point of the offense now, only to go to him to score, not to go to him to pass or do anything that is more difficult because he's not at that stage yet. The guy who had played defense against him most of the game, Sheck Woods, the senior from Senegal, is on the bench with four personal fouls. And so replaced. David Narsuk is in the ball game. He's a junior from the Sudan. Now remember the last time these two teams played, Cincinnati won that game 70 to 61. Narsuk in the same position of substituting for a foul prone check Woods. Narsuk was three of three from the field. Six points, had about three rebounds. He played an overall good game as a sub. And here he is matched up against Adams again. Adams going to back his way in. There's the double team. Adams forces it up. Can't hit it. And a contested rebound goes to Cincinnati. This is Kilpatrick on the run to right. Back to his running mate in the backcourt. And Kilpatrick is going to be called for an offensive foul, pushing off with his free arm. That's his second. Well, once again, good defense tightening up, trying to cut down on the penetration. And right there, you see him using that left arm. They did more than a nice job of holding his position. And on the other end, we talked about it. Steven Adams, a focal point. As soon as they inbounded the ball, it went straight at him, down low, and continually. They're going to find out if he's got the chops to be able to carry his team. Well, Cincinnati on that last possession was ready for it. They ended up with three guys <laughs> around Adams. And there's the post up once again. Take it down, get a better angle. There you go. See if they can isolate him. Here comes the double team again. Going to foul away from the ball. It's going to be a push on Robo uh, Robles. <laughs> That's two on Rubens. Moore is in for Pittsburgh. He wears number 44. And Woodall is back in for Robinson. Oh, step on close. Very close, but Brian O'Connell was right there with an eye on it. You gotta allow the ball to go into the backcourt. You should never catch it that close for fear of that mistake being made. Patterson to the rack, and that's blocked. Good defense by Narsuk. Rubles behind the screen. Sanders looking in. Narsuk recognized the mismatch quickly. He demanded the ball. And Ziegler ended up fouling and picking up his third. Ziegler only 6-5, no physical match for Narsuk, the seventh footer. I think that's the only way you can make them pay for that hedge is to get the ball quickly back in against that mismatch. Exactly. And he's got to roll quickly, maybe even slip the screen to give him an even quicker step to the basket. It's almost a set shot. Seven thirty-two, Cincinnati. Boy, Parker just hounding Woodall, forcing him to give it up. Ziegler works in against a lot of pressure to Adams. Nice pass. Ziegler drew the defense to him, and Adams down with eleven. And again, instinctively going straight to the front of the rim on the penetration. Thirty-seven, thirty-four. There's a mismatch once again, although Adams can help out if he steps back. Narsuk double team, and that's going to be a foul. 
going to call that on J.J. Moore. Well, penetration solves a lot of problems against the defense because you force the help to come. And when the help comes to you, somebody's left open. You saw Narsuk come over quickly, maybe a little too quickly, and Adams straight to the front of the rim on the receiving end of a nice pass for the dunk. Narsuk will come out, and Kelvin Gaines, number 24, is getting more time the last few ball games. He checks it. He's 6'10. Not as physical as the other two big guys, but to give you a few minutes. Handy to have those guys around, isn't it? We said it's a precious commodity. Size. Kilpatrick wants the screen. It makes a difficult cross-court pass and great anticipation by J.J. Moore. Good baseline drive, but no shot by Cameron Wright. This game gets sloppy at times because of the physical play of both teams defensively. Kind of throws you off your rhythm, throws you off balance just a little bit. Win. Tough off balance shot. He may have got the foul. First bucket for Gilon Gwynn. Take a look again, one on one. Recognizing the mismatch, going left hard. And four, just standing up straight, not quick enough to move laterally into the basket to cover. timeout by the Panthers. Cincinnati keeps jumping out to a lead. Pitt keeps coming back. Can they do it again? and the Bearcats lead it by six with 12 14 to go in the game the journey to the tourney continues on Monday night on ESPN at nine o'clock with the Sunflower Showdown as Kansas State takes on Kansas also live on watch ESPN and of course Bill Self and company really frustrated with their first three game losing streak in six or seven years and they're just not used to it. Oh, well, that tells you something about their program, the success that they've had. You know, you talk about four in a row. Wow. 
I don't think Bill Self has ever experienced anything no. like that. Not in a long time. He's going to have to come up with a new comparison after the last loss. He said it was the worst Kansas team since Dr. Naismith invented the game. What's next? <laughs> I'll tell you what, they'll have a tough one with Kansas State. Kansas State in a battle with Iowa State right now. Twelve minutes to go from Cincinnati in a six-point ball game. Woodall behind his back. Great bounce pass to the baseline. And a foul as J.J. Moore put it up. Great ball handling by Woodall and a beautiful bounce. Boy, how sweet was that sleight of hand. Backhand off the bounce. Doesn't get much better than that. In the Big East, had a huge first half with 15 points. He's gone away in the second half, only 0 for 1 from the floor. If you only shoot one shot, it's pretty tough to do anything. Well, you can attribute that in part, obviously, to the Pittsburgh defense. But once again, Kilpatrick trying to use himself somewhat as a decoy when he's on the floor to try to get others involved. Plus, you got to remember, Cincinnati has 10 turnovers. Kilpatrick has four of those turnovers. J.J. Moore misses the free throw. Unusual for him, an 86% shooter from the line. Got the second one. Three points for J.J. Moore out of Brentwood, New York. Both of these teams with four losses in the Big East. See the help right there, switching out. Wright gets a good job of getting a hand in Kilpatrick's face. Misses the three. Here comes Woodall for the Panthers. Two on four, has to hold up. Now he drives. And that one just laid on the rim. The rebound goes to Gaines. Sanders, a lot of contact, no whistle. Layup won't go. More contact underneath for the foul. Well, I don't know how they couldn't call something on the previous one. Well, one thing you got to say is, for the most part, officials have been consistent. They've allowed these guys to play. 
You know, with their reputations as strong physical defensive teams, the officials aren't taking anything away from either of these teams. They're allowing them to play their game. True, but to me, when somebody gets nailed like that and goes to the floor, you got to call something. I said that about three times in the first half. <laughs> That's what I mean by consistent. They haven't called any of them. Just echoing your comments. <laughs> they haven't called any of them, right? Dante Taylor will go to the line. It's almost looks like a hockey game with line changes. Although, you know, as a player, I kind of like this, this style of play. Oh, I understand. I mean, you know, it's like going back, going back to the playground. No blood, no foul. Taylor hits the free throw. Right there, oh, that was a flop, though. You can see yeah. his chest bounce back. Now, right there, he slaps at the ball, visibly trying to gain an advantage. But the contact underneath the basket, you see his chest fly back. That was a flop. It was a good one. Gets an A in acting 101. The Rubles will check back in. 40 to 37. Panthers close the gap to three. Wide open right. Too strong on the three. Good job over there by Patterson to tip the rebound. Oh, good run. And a good job of running the court by Dante Taylor for the jam. Just out hustled the defense. Well, he played seven minutes in their last game against Seton Hall and only three fouls. So he didn't get much time, did not score. So he's trying to make up for lost time. It's going to be a foul on Ziegler trying to set a screen. He's called for his fourth. And then getting behind everybody, as you see, Dante Taylor. Nobody picked him up except for Trey Woodall. When you're retreating on defense, you should always look over your shoulder, first and foremost. Look at the battle inside. Between Taylor really working each other over. Nierso, Nierso gets the rebound now. Forty thirty-nine, Cincinnati. Good double team. Good pass. Right in the lane. Banks it off the glass. Cashmere Wright has five. The backcourt must score for Cincinnati Wright and Kilpatrick combined for 32 points a game. And that's kind of what they did in their first meeting with Pittsburgh. They were the ones who dismantled the defense for 70 points. They combined for, I believe, 34 points. Cameron Wright misses at the other end. Rubles with a step through. Does the bucket count? It does. Five for Rubles. And Cameron Wright picks up his second. Adams going to check back in. There's Adams, the freshman from New Zealand. When he gets the ball, he's been very, very effective. Rubles knocks down the free throw. What a valuable player he has been for them. Led them rebounding eight times this year. Lead back to six. And full court pressure. Ziegler fouled by Kilpatrick. Now they're going to give it to Rubles. And that's a break for Cincinnati that he got it. He said it's a superstar guard. Well, you see driving down, just trying to cut him off on the sideline, and Rubles makes contact. Got to get there a little bit sooner. Ziegler goes to the line. The transfer from Central Michigan played two years for his dad there. Boy. Just a free throw. Those are big. Right quickly back the other way. Although for Pittsburgh, they recognize the next foul by Cincinnati puts them in a double bonus. And you certainly 
need to take advantage of that, especially with nine minutes left to go in the game. Pittsburgh one foul away from just being in a bonus. Parker travels. And Parker will come out of the game, so will Kilpatrick. Uh, sorry, Parker stays. Kilpatrick the only one to sit. Now they show three quarter court defense. And trying to trap. Woodall got in the lane, had to pick up his dribble. Crowd really into it. Eight to shoot. Woodall gets a screen. Kicks it back to Patterson from the long range. Offensive rebound, Zana. Boy, when he's gotten his hands on the ball, that Zana's a tough kid. Tough enough to withstand the physical play under the basket and still come up with it. This rebound is one of those that are tough. They hit the front of the rim and come right back down hard. And just good, strong hands. Well, Zana gives them the opportunity. Got to make your free throws to win, and when Pitt has been good, it's helped them win ball games. 67 percent in their victories, but 54 percent in their losses. You cannot hope to win shooting 54 percent. And Zana misses the front end of a two-shot opportunity. Man's averaging over 10 points a game, averaged six a year ago, so he is much improved for them offensively. Boy, that was an ugly looking free throw, but somehow it found its way to the bottom of the net. Yeah, once it hit that rim, you pray kill it. <laughs> and, and it died. Went right through the basket. Nine points for Zana. The lead is cut to five, but Pitt leaving, leaving a lot of points at the free throw line. Kilpatrick out of the corner had a great look at a three couldn't knock it down. Adams they spread the court enough so he's isolated one on one and nice it's virtually move. unstoppable in that situation. Well game's just not equipped to stop Adams and the reason near Sook is not in the game I suspect he's got stamina problem. He can get up and down a few times, but you got to take him out, give him some rest, and bring him back in. Well, but Adams has 13 points in this ball game. There's a three by Wright. And the crowd and the Cincinnati bench wanted a foul on that rebound. And this one's knocked away from Adams. And I'm going to say Adams has 13 points. His season and career high 16. So he is approaching that. And he has helped lead the Panthers back to the three points, Len. Well, they were going to go to him early and often. And they lived up to it.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Now that's better. Welcome back to Cincinnati. It's a three-point ball game. Bearcats on top of the Panthers. 7-21 to go in this game. Stephen Adams becoming more of a factor for Pittsburgh. And Cincinnati has fallen into some foul trouble, particularly up front with Mooch with four. He's been on the bench for quite a while. Kilpatrick and Rubles each have three. You get the feeling Adams, every time he's going to touch it, he's going to be able to score. Well, Pitt certainly wants Cincinnati to believe that. And if he scores, fine. If he doesn't and Cincinnati shifts their defense, then someone else will be in a position to get a high percentage stop shot. Gaines continues to be on him one and one, and Cincinnati goes zone. No, you can't put that one in there. Good a pass from this Patterson is. Lucky. Yes, it was a low bounce pass to a big man is very, very difficult to catch. Well, a big man who doesn't, who Who's still well hasn't guarded. mastered it, right? And he still hasn't mastered the ability to catch those low bounce passes. Nine to shoot. Adams was calling for the ball. Instead, they go outside. Woodall will launch and hit a monster three. Woodall has nine, and we're tied at 45. What a big basket! Woodall has hit three threes in this game. Loose ball picked up. Rubles cannot connect, and the Panthers will have a chance to take the lead. Good pass. What a great look to get it inside to Ziegler for the layup. And even His though, first two points left, and they've got the lead. Even though they've been slow at doing what they do best, moving the ball and finding the open man, averaging 17 assists a game. This is why. Take a look. It goes inside, back outside, and then just a nice cut right in the heart of the defense. And Patterson right at the top of the key. They're just floating down low for his Ziggler. Boy, it's been a game of runs, and this is an eight-nothing burst for the Panthers to give them the lead. ESPN College Basketball available live anywhere, anytime on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and the Watch ESPN app. You talk about competitive, so what do we have now? We got we had five ties, we got now seven lead changes. No quarter asked, none given. Say everybody out there has earned whatever they've gotten tonight. Sure, only been one layup on a fast break. It's about the only uncontested basket this entire game. Jack Mudge is back on the court with four fouls for Cincinnati. And they've got to have him in there against Adams defensively. Wow, look at the range there. And they'll draw a foul on the offensive rebound. I mean, you can't take that shot away from Sean Kilpatrick because he makes it. He makes shots like that with, you know, some regularity. But a time and score situation, I'm sure he could get that shot anytime. Just fortunate. Yeah, that's a long way out. Uh, fortunately, Ruble is under there for the offensive rebound. But you don't want to waste the opportunities against a pit defense that will thrive when you're taking bad shots. Rubles with a chance to tie. They've got another. Rubles with seven. Both of these teams holding their opponents under 60 points a game. Anybody gets to 60 in this one, I think they win. Rubles makes them both. 47-47. Full court pressure. Oh, 
out. Nice ball handled by Woodall. Didn't allow Wright's ability to make him change direction. Hurt his handle. Cincinnati doesn't play a lot of zone, but they played it the last three or four possessions. Ziegler goes to the baseline, taken away by Rubles. Just reached in and snatched it out of his hands. Both teams now going zone. Not necessarily their strength in defense, but they got to change it. Rubles blocked by Adams. Nick Crona wanted a foul, but that's four blocks by Adams. And it looked like a pretty good call. A lot of contact. Actually, the block was good. The contact initiated by Rubles. Yeah, exactly. So, again, the official saying that's uh, incidental. Hey. 14 to shoot. Right to Sanders exchanging the ball outside now six to shoot and Kilpatrick knows it and he's fouled at the top of the circle on a hand check. A Ziegler obviously compounding the mistake he made on one hand and the turnover on the offensive end with utilizing his hands instead of moving his feet. See the reason why he cannot move his feet quickly because he's standing straight up. If he were down in defensive position he could have beaten Sean Kilpatrick to that spot and avoided the foul. Just because you're playing zone doesn't mean that you cannot get down in solid defensive stance. And it looked like he put two hands on him. And by rule, if you're a defender and you put two hands on the ball handler, it's a foul. Yeah, he tried no to. No matter get, how incidental the contact. He tried to get those two hands out in front and kind of drive himself in that path. But got caught for it. But again, if you get down in good defensive guarding position, you're able to move your feet low center of gravity. You can get to that spot a lot quicker. It doesn't matter whether you're in zone or man. Kilpatrick with 16 points. Cincinnati with a one point lead. Robinson and Woodall puts best two defenders on the court. And the jam for Patterson as they found him slashing down the lane. Patterson with seven hit back on top. And Mike, we talked about it last week. The way Pitt plays against the zone, they don't have stationary guys in the middle. They will slash people in, catching the defenders by surprise. Wide open three. Kilpatrick's been. Very opportunistic as a scorer, but three times he's been in that corner and hasn't been able to score. And now he commits a foul on the other end. That's going to be a huge call because it's four on Kill Patrick. How about the Wiley veteran, Trey Woodall? Just pump fake and got him up in the air. Put it on the floor real hard. Yep. Pump fake. He and the defender, it. Right. The defender right there hard. And then he puts in just a little bit of a ball fake because he knows the aggressiveness of Kilpatrick. That's a senior play. Put all 77% from the floor. Kilpatrick is going to stay on the court. So he and Mudge both out there with four. And when you're asked to play aggressive defense, it's very hard to do it with four personal fouls. Well, it's another one. Well, Maybe not... one of the reasons they have gone to the zone defense. Oh, there's no question that they wanted to not only conserve energy, but also avoid fouls. But Kilpatrick, when you're talking about being called on to play solid defense, I don't think he's being called on to play defense right yeah. now. <laughs> it's, true. it's this end of the floor where they need him. Absolutely. They're down three. Made no penetration. Shot clock is down to 10. This is Mudge. Kicks it back outside for the three. Right can't hit it. Every possession gets bigger. Woodall open. Uh, Got uh, it. That's a dagger in the heart. Wide open, and he made him pay. 14 points 
for Trey Woodall, and Pitt has its biggest lead of the entire game at 54-48. And it's all about being opportunists, moving the ball, finding the open man. And there aren't many teams in the country that do it better than the Pittsburgh Panthers. And don't you love clutch shooters, guys you can count on to come through like that? Uh, look at this passing right there. You see the cutter right down the heart of the zone. Nobody's stationary where guys can play him. He just cuts right down. See right there? Caught everybody by surprise. And here, once again, off of a little bit of penetration, sucks in the Bearcat defense, and Woodall calmly knocks it down. Woodall just wrote his name in the record book as a thousand point scorer and already has over 500 assists. So there is a very exclusive club, including Sean Miller. Well, remember those teams, Levance Fields, remember Brandon Knight and his yes, role? Carl Krauser with the cross for the Bronx. That's some terrific college point guards right there. Big possession here for Cincinnati. Down by six. This zone that Pitt went to a couple of minutes ago has been quite effective. Woods kicks it back outside. 12 to shoot. I see they're not allowing the penetration. That was the thing Pitt was victimized by and they worried about. Knocked out of bounds. It's out to Pitt, but only three on the shot clock. Or out to Cincinnati, rather, but only three on the shot clock. Woodall, is this the shot of the game? It could be. It gives them their biggest lead. It's 54-48, Panthers over the Bearcats, 242 left from Cincinnati. And you, you have to give the Panthers defense credit for what they have done against Sean Kilpatrick. He has missed all five of his shots in the second half, scored only one point, committed three personals. And you attribute a lot to that to the zone, where they're able to go out yes. and cover and get some help. They're able to stay in his face and challenge him for the long shot. Now remember the ball was knocked out of bounds with only three on the shot clock. And they're trying to run Kilpatrick around screens to get him open. Now they get right and he'll have to launch from way downtown. Can't hit it. What a rebound. Offensive rebound and a foul. What a rebound indeed. The foul will be on Patterson. 
But Parker went and got it. Yeah, look at Jaquan Parker on the corner, right side of your corner, slashes into the middle and just fights Patterson. Look at Patterson's got him by the arm. Parker, that's why you say rebounding is about desire. Nobody yeah. wanted him more than that man, for sure. And he'll go to the free throw line. Can't be his favorite place. He's only a 55% free throw shooter on the season, although he is one for one in this game. And these are huge. Got it. That hardly looked like a 55% stroke. He's still feeling the feeling the pain from fighting off Patterson, Lamar Patterson, and trying to get that rebound. Game day follows us. How about that? You talk about him shooting in the 50s on the line. That was perfect form, perfect rotation. Digger gets a home game. It's at Notre Dame. The lead has been cut to four. Full court pressure. Oh, looked like he traveled, got away with it. And then he splits a double team and they'll call the foul. Think you're right, it looked like he might have slid ever so slightly. But I tell you, you can't say enough about Trey Woodall and what he's been able to do. Watch him get the ball inbounds and watch his feet. Well, oh. now he just turned and pivoted. He might have slid a little bit. That left foot is the pivot foot. But if you're watching his upper body, it looked like he slid, but you watch his feet, he held his pivot foot. Woodall cannot get his 15th point. And that's big. Boy, Jaquan Parker, a 50% shooter, knocked him down calmly. Woodall, a 74%, 78% shooter. Just playing now. Didn't get the second one either. Two big misses for the Panthers. You need free throw shooting to close out close games. Pit zone has been very effective at keeping the ball on the perimeter. And you see when Kilpatrick gets it, they're able to cover the shooter inside out. That was where you want to go. Gaines, offensive rebound, had it knocked out of his hands. That's the one thing that prevents Pitt from loading up on the shooters. You go inside, the zone drops back, and then you kick it back outside. And the shooters are stepping into the shot. It's right there. there. Jermaine Sanders will come back in for Mick Cronin. Shaquille Thomas will sit. Fresh 35 on the shot clock, and they get it in, and it's going to be a foul on Adams. Adams lost, Sheck Budge, and all he could do was hold. Watch the left arm. See him grabbing a handful of jersey. Adams should have been all the way around. And that's, again, his inexperience. But right now, the double bonus. Mudge, a 66.7% free throw shoot. Both teams just giving away points at the line. And when you shoot the ball and it hits that back of the rim and it comes back at you, you know you're shooting it too flat. Because unless you shoot it perfectly, it's going to hit the back of the rim and come back at you. you got to get some arc underneath it. Put some air under that ball. Mudge has good form. Just got to get air under it. Young man lost 30 pounds in the offseason. Enabled him to play more minutes and play better on top of it. Three point game. And when the ball doesn't touch any iron, you know you got the perfect amount of air on it. Exactly. What a bonus to have Woodall and Robinson on the court at the same time. Patterson also an excellent handler. Adams, could they back it nice against pass. Mudge? He makes a brilliant pass for the layup. An easy deuce for Zana, who has 11. That's a great look, Glenn. This is why, folks, 
when you look at the numbers, the most efficient offensive team in America are the Pittsburgh Panthers. You take a look right there, they take their time, and just a little bit of a fake caused the miscommunication. You look at the top of your screen, a little bit of a fake, and Zana just cuts down the middle, got a white shirt near him. Zana in the double figure since the first time since January 8th. He's been a very consistent scorer at 10 and a half points a game. But he has stepped it up tonight in a big one. And when you score 11 points in a ball game like this, where your team only has 56, it's really more than that. Yeah, I mean, you look at the balance among starters. Pittsburgh's got three guys in double figures. The highest score has got 14. Flip side of it is Cincinnati with only one double figure score. And that's Sean Kilpatrick at 16, who has only one in the second half. You look at the, the numbers. Pittsburgh shooting around 45% from the field, 50% from beyond the arc. Cincinnati has missed its last 10 shots from the floor. And that's why they're shooting in the 30s. Trying to get something inside. 1-12 to go in the game. This is Mudge. Kicks it back to right. Now Kilpatrick will fire. He's just off on that three-point shot. And he was by one. He was also challenged by Robinson. A nice job once again in that zone getting in front. Boy, that looked like an up and down. Patterson went up with the ball, came back down with it. Somebody must have got some kind of hand on it to knock it loose. I thought he dribbled and came to a jump stop. Right there, dribble, go through the guys. That's a jump stop. You're allowed to do that. Off the dribble, you can jump through, come to a stop. Woodall goes to the line, called for the foul as Cashmere right. Or Robinson at the line, rather. 74% shooter, and he makes it a two-possession game at 57-51. He can make it three possessions with this one. Well, those numbers are prophetic right there. They're shooting better than 54%. Not quite the 67 that gets them to win. Patterson with his first two points, or Robinson with his first two points of the game. That's huge. Three-possession ball game. Cincinnati's got to hurry. Mudge not looking to shoot, just to pass. Wright will try a three in and out. And now Mudge and Adams are tied up. They're going to call Adams for the foul. He got hit in the face and had a big armful of one of Woods's arms. I'm really surprised that Adams is staying in the ball game. Woods makes these two inbound the ball. If I'm Cincinnati, I go right at him. Woods way off on that free throw. I guess you got to go at him anyway. Yeah, for sure. Only on 37 yep. 6 left in this game. And remind you, Stephen Adams only shooting 37% from the free throw line, so he is the prime target. For Cincinnati, make or miss. Woods gets the roll on the second one. Adams still on the court, and now Jamie Dixon gets a sub to the scorer's table in time to get him out and brings on J.J. Moore. Boy, I wonder what took so long. <laughs> Just in the nick of time. Inbound and a foul. No time came off the clock. Kashmir Wright commits his third. Now they're playing Pittsburgh playing offense defense. He's trying to get Steven Adams back in the ball game on the defensive end. Robinson, the floor general of this ball club. Leads the Big East and assists the turnover ratio, fourth in the nation. 3.3 assists for every turnover he has. And how's this for an outstanding ball handling game? I mean, there have been a lot of up and down, but Pittsburgh with only seven turnovers. As physical as this game yeah, was. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 
Cincinnati on the other hand with 12 that the official score sheet calls on and Pittsburgh really capitalized on those 12 turnovers getting 15 points out of them. Now both officials or both coaches are having this situation explained to them. When you substitute this many guys if time does not come off the clock they can't come in something even if it's a tenth of a second has to come off the clock before you can make a substitution. And on the inbounds foul no time came off the clock. Right. So now we're playing musical chairs <laughs> sending guys on and off the floor and having everybody kneeling in front of the scorers table. And meanwhile Robinson being frozen at the free throw line where he is three for three and has his only three points. Mick Cronin making his case for a substitution. And finally the ball will go back and play to Robinson. Sixty to fifty two the Panthers have extended their lead to eight. And if you're Pittsburgh right now you just want to fall back in that zone perhaps and not commit any personal fouls. And now Cincinnati wants a timeout. Okay. Take a look at tonight's power player of the game brought to you by TurboTax. Who do you like, Glenn? Well, Steven Adams, man on the spot. 13 points, only missed one shot from the field, four blocks. He's the guy that really emerged down the stretch here in this second half and made that terrific pass to help maybe seal the deal. The way they play offense, do you see him getting more touches? At the rest of this season. Oh, absolutely. And but what has to happen is that he's got to start off in a manner that gives his teammates confidence. And if we've seen now in two games in a row that we've done, it took a little bit of time before they really looked to him. And when he starts handling those bounce passes, when he starts making strong moves into the paint, he develops more confidence. He starts demanding the ball. And at his size, who's going to deny? It? They've won six of their last seven, including Syracuse. This would be a win over another ranked team. Then they have to face number 24 and number 25 back to back. They'll be at home. Then a tough St. John's team. Villanova's playing pretty well. But this, if they can get through those first two games, this looks like a great run that Pitt can have. And Cincinnati's remaining schedule, they will face three ranked teams in their next seven including number 11 Louisville and then you take a look at short turnaround they're at Connecticut and then they play Connecticut the following week and regardless of where you rank in this conference those are always tough games you try to split if nothing else or sweep if you can Cincinnati has to hurry right and the threes just won't go. They are eighth in the Big East in three point percentage in 33 1. And this is going to be a signature win on the road, it appears, for the Pitt Panthers. And the standings they have Marquette and Syracuse, the only two teams with two losses. But Pittsburgh will hang a fifth defeat on Cincinnati and stay with four in the loss column themselves. And Patterson could make this a four possession game with one more free throw and the faithful starting to come to their feet and head to the exits. And you know what right before our eyes we're seeing a, a team that was always rooted in solid defense but had difficulty scoring now developing a signature as far as scoring with Adams being a threat inside to go along with their perimeter threat. Kilpatrick too strong. 
Cincinnati's last field goal came at the 9-21 mark of this game. And you've got to credit the pit defense for a solid performance in this one. Once again, the final score here, Pitt 62, Cincinnati 52. For Len Elborn, our entire crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on ESPN, College Game Day covered by State Farm. Now we take you to South Bend.